Hello and welcome to the Ventures Interactive training video, How to Install and Use the Drupal Aggregator Module. My name is Matthew Kors. I'm with Ventures Interactive. We do web development, Drupal development. And today I want to talk about a very interesting uh, and powerful module that Drupal has now built into Drupal Core called the Aggregator Module. And a lot of people don't understand exactly what the aggregator module does because as with many modules that are in Drupal the name doesn't really describe the function but what what the aggregator module does is it goes and it collects information from RSS feeds XML feeds um, whether they're on external websites or blogs and brings it in and displays the list of articles on your website with links to the external website. Uh, you can also actually link it to an internal blog. So jumping into it, as you can see we have here a basic Drupal installation um, using a domain that I use for development purposes uh, videobrains.com. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to enable the aggregator module. Now if you've played around with Drupal, uh, then you are probably familiar with this process. But if you haven't, I'm going to run through it very quickly. The first step is to click on the Modules button up in the top navigation. And when you do that, you'll see that one of the first modules listed is the Aggregator module. Now, although it is included in Drupal Core, by default, the Aggregator module is not enabled. So I'm going to go ahead and enable the aggregator module and very important remember to scroll down and save configuration. It's very common to uh, accidentally forget to, to save your, your configuration when you make module changes and then you waste time trying to figure out why your modules aren't working. So it's important to do that. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to click on the configure link. And as you can see, there are several fields here. Right now, I'm going to leave all of these fields by default. Um, the first is the allowed HTML tags. This is just these are tags that are going to be allowed to come in from external feeds. Other tags will be stripped out. The number of items shown in the listing pages. Now, this is going to be a default number, but we can overwrite it in the feeds section that we're going to deal with later. And then a few other uh, configurations, how long we're going to allow items to be displayed and whether or not we're going to allow multiple categories to be assigned to a feed and so forth. Go ahead and save the configuration. And then we're going to come back, click on configuration. When we scroll down, you'll notice that under web services, we now have our feed aggregator link is now available. So we'll go ahead and click on that. And as you can see, we have uh, two kinds of things we can do. We can add categories, which is this bottom area, or we can add feeds. Now, initially we're going to add a category and then we're going to assign the feeds to those categories. And keep in mind, you can have many categories and then you can have multiple feeds assigned to each one of the categories. But to keep things simple, we're going to start off with just one category and one feed. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on Add Category. And this is just as simple as it looks. I'll add in a, a category. I'll call this Drupal News. And then for the description, it's always a good idea to add descriptions. We're going to say um, uh, latest news from Drupal. Click the Save button. And now you can see that the category Drupal News has been added. This is good to just ensure that the system heard what you were asking it to do. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to click back over here to feed aggregator and you can see that now our category has been added to the list of categories. Now we can come in and edit but for now all we're gonna do is 
add a feed to this category. So I click the Add Feed button, and I add a title. The URL is a is a RSS feed or an XML feed. Many times when you're on websites you'll see the RSS uh, insignia which indicates that the link that's behind that image is an RSS feed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one that I've already found on Drupal's website and I'm going to paste it down here into the URL field. Now this next setting the update interval is just how often is your system going to go to this URL and check to see if there are new feeds. Right now the default is one hour and we'll leave it at that. It's important to remember that the aggregator module uses the cron capability of Drupal. So if you have cron enabled then it will go out and find these feeds periodically during the day. If you don't have cron enabled or if you don't have it set up correctly then it will never update uh, your feed. So you're going to need to make sure that cron is enabled and that it's configured correctly and it's, it's operating. Now you'll see that the default number of items is showing is five. We're going to leave that like it is. And then you see here we have the category. Now remember I added this Drupal News category and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to check that. Obviously if I had added more categories there would be a longer list here and I'm going to save those changes. Again, Drupal is nice enough to let us know that it understands what we ask. It's added the feed. So I'm going to X out of that and as you can see nothing has changed on this web page. I can hit refresh. Nothing has changed. What I have to do now is add, now that I have that feed, I need to add a block to my layout. The way we do that is we click on Structure up in the top menu, then click on Blocks, and scroll down to the area that says Disabled. This is the area where all new blocks, all new uh, items that we add to Drupal are going to display until we assign them to a, re a region or a zone in our layout. So as you can see there's actually two items that have been added. The first is Drupal News category and the, and the second is Drupal News for Developers feed. So this is the category we added and this is the feed we added. If we had multiple feeds assigned to the category then it would make a lot of sense to display the, the Drupal News category because it would pull the latest information from all of those feeds and display it. But in this case we only have one feed and I'm going to assign that one to the sidebar second region. When I do that and I scroll up you can see that now Drupal News for Developers has been added to the sidebar second region. However, it is yellow and that means that it hasn't, while I've made the change, I haven't committed the change yet. So I need to remember to scroll down and save blocks. Now when I hit X, I can come back and I can refresh my home page. And as you can see, still nothing's changed. And there's a reason for that. That is the all-important cron. As I mentioned, you have to run cron in order for Drupal to go get the feed information from those external sources. So what I'm going to do now is click on configuration and then in the system block click on cron and then run cron. When I do that you'll see that it says cron ran successfully and it also says there's new syndicated content from Drupal News for Developers. So I click on the X and it'll reload my page and now you can see that my block has appeared and I have Drupal News populated in it. If I click on any of these links you can see it takes me over to the external website and shows me the news item that was in the feed. 
And that is how you install and use the Drupal Aggregator module. Hope you enjoyed it.